success of an entrepreneur. We've raised the bar. Learn firsthand from successful business owners and create your own path to success. I'm going to show you how great I am. It's time to hit the road to grow with team lead of the Enriquez Group, Realtor Vinny. Hi, you Road to Road listeners. Today, I got Adib, Michael. You know what? We just went over your last name, too. Okay, and I'll, I feel like I'm going to butcher it. Oh, Seuss. It's like Dr. Seuss. Seuss. It's like Dr. Seuss with an oh. A and an L. Yeah, yeah. Dr. Okay, that's well. That's simple. Oh, Seuss. Seuss. Yeah, it's okay. See, you know what? Now, when you have the correlation, right, it makes it so yeah. much easier. It's, yeah. It's okay. Be, I, well, I, 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 I've been called worse, so no, no worries. <laughs> What's the worst name you've ever been called? Al Sawas, something like that, or they, they butcher my first name a, a bit, Adab, but you know, it's just all kind of things. But it's okay, it's you know, I, I, that's why I go by Michael. Michael, sometimes uh, business well, they know me by Michael, personal they know me by Adib. All right, we'll, we'll go, we'll go by Michael. Uh, yeah, that's today. Good. So, <laughs> so you're a partner and dentist at Broadview uh, Dental Group. I mean, kind of walk us through what you guys do there. Yeah, well, I'm a dentist. Actually, I'm the owner, uh, CEO, all the stuff, established founder of the Broadview Dental Group. Uh, it's a solo practice of dental office that I established back in 2005. And uh, over the years, I acquired three different businesses, uh, dental businesses, and I merged them together. Hmm. And uh, so we provide dental services with all kind of a, uh, all kind of dental services. And I just had my first uh, associate dentist joining me. So it's been a, a great addition to the practice. Uh, so I have grown, uh, been blessed to grow uh, over the years uh, to have a really successful practice. It's not the average practice uh, compared to the average dental uh, practices. So we're we're blessed that we have a great production, great collection. We have a great culture that's going on. So basically to answer your question, we, I, we provide uh, all kinds of dental services. Well, we'll get into your story, and I'm curious. I mean, being that you've bought three books, it sounds like over the years, three right? three dental practices, yes. Um, and I them. What's what's your what's your process? I mean, if you were to buy a book tomorrow, a database, mm -hmm. what's your process of, of bringing in those new clients to your your business? Basically, it's definitely let the dentist endorse me uh, with a letter, or you know, if they can work with the with with us for a little bit of time, that's fantastic. I find it sometimes is a little bit not not a good idea to let the dentist practice because they're the patients are used to a different culture so we bring them to a new culture which is 99 percent of them appreciate that culture because we're, we're, we're a little bit different different mm -hmm. uh, that way we do things uh definitely endorsement of the dentist uh just uh, bring them in and uh send the definitely send a letter to the patients and uh, just basically uh bringing them to the uh, to the office and introducing them to the new culture and uh, just welcoming them as new as new patients when you say different culture what's that different culture look like usually? so basically what we have we are very customer uh, based oriented practice so if you go to to different medical offices and I go to medical offices all the time it's just all about how to do you know the pro the process do the process our mission statement is we uh, strive to provide personal experience to the patient while establishing uh, uh, you know a highest quality of care and comfort so basically we focus on the personal experience uh, so the patient comes in we we make sure that they give them a tour of the office we make sure that we have a when the, we have a great uh, way of answering the phone make sure the patient comfortable we gift a lot to the to our patients uh, I, I my philosophy is anybody who walks in my office they have to have a gift for example I like to give patients uh, lottery tickets, you know, scratch off. Uh, mm -hmm. They enjoy that. They love that. So you see them when they get them, they come the next time. They tell me, listen, I didn't win anything on my lottery ticket. I said, okay, here's another one. Take another one. Have have fun with it. So they love this culture. They're always gifting. My my philosophy is I practice the, the mm -hmm. principles of influence, which one of they got a lottery ticket. <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm actually just incorporating that to my business. I like Are giving you? lottery tickets to clients. So I, I pre oh. appreciate you throwing that out there. Oh, I love that. I love that. It's awesome. You know what? It's amazing because people, first of all, uh, it, you're practicing the one of the principles of influence, which is uh, 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 reciprocation, is mm -hmm. you give somebody to someone will expecting something in return. Uh, we human beings, we like to uh, give back in a way. 
But I, I like to give not expecting anything. It what it creates excitement in the office. It creates excitement for the patient, and it gives hope. Scratch off, Larry. Okay, I'm gonna win. So it gives hope to the patient. So when the patient comes in, they have okay. okay the, this dentist put a hope in me. So it kind of create subconsciously something connection with with us. So this is one of the things. So it's uh, so yeah. I, patient loves it. Sometimes I give them mugs. Sometimes I give them like simple stuff. It doesn't have to be anything. Sometimes I give them cookies. For example, for Fourth of July now we're having. Uh, custom made cookies that the patient comes in and I give him cookie. They tell me, what's that? What's up, doc, Dr. Also, are you going to want me to get, the, get a cavity? He said, yes, we want you to get a cavity so we can get busy, you know, creating a good fun culture. So this is part of the stuff what I do. And this is the culture what that, that we try to create for our patients. So the patient comes in uh, not only to get dental treatment, they come in to really uh, feel like they're part of a family. They expect that we they're going to be treated like, like a, a not a number. They're going to be treated like a human being. We make sure that we talk to them about all their personal life. We make sure that we uh, have a great emphasis and personal connection with the patients. Send them, uh, if we know that they have occasion, we send the letters, congratulations. I make phone calls for patients who are sick to make sure that they're doing okay. Uh, yeah, and we, we have follow-up calls for them when they get big procedures, such as uh, surgeries. We call them the, the same night. And I, all of them have my cell phone number, so they have access to me at any time, 24-7. So this is part of the stuff that we do to create a good culture in our office. Well, let's rewind. I mean, who was a, a, a young Michael? I mean, growing up, who was a young Michael? How how young do you want to you want me go, to go? Go as young as you feel necessary. I mean, we're yeah. we're, we're talking about yeah. one years old, two years old. I Man, who was uh, teens, whatever it might be. So I'll tell you. I'll go back to how I was growing up. Uh, you know, where the, my family. We were originally Syrians from Syria, and we were kind of a. Uh, frugal families, mid, less than middle class family. We did not, we were not rich. So uh, I did not live in a, in a, I have, I was not affluent financially, let's put it this way. But uh, I had good values. My dad installed for me, in me, good values. And uh, I, I just ho always had an ambition living overseas. My dad implemented in our heads that, you know, you got to go live in the United States. It's a land of uh, free, it's a land of opportunities. And oh, I always had that in the back of my mind. And then, uh, you know, I traveled to many different countries and uh, areas, and uh, I learned a lot by knowing other people from different cultures and different, uh, uh, you know, uh, countries. So, uh, and uh, yeah, I, I initially, were you not born in a family that understand about business, you struggle a little bit by trying to know what business is. And you have in the concept, the notion in your mind, like money is bad, you know, like <clears throat> rich people are bad, rich people, all they do, they're steal. Well, you know, it's not true. Because maybe in other countries, third world country, they might. This is how people get rich by by going the wrong way. In the United States, you have a it's a land of opportunity. Anybody can make it, being the you know, going the right way, doing the right thing. So it's it's very easy as long as you focus, as long as you are uh, have a plan and have a goal that you seek. So yeah, I traveled to a different country, Europe, and I did dental school in Algeria, and then I I came here, and uh, I'll share this a little bit of my beginning in the. And then I said, when I came, I came as a dentist, you know, I had my diploma from overseas and I said like, oh my God, I'm going to make a lot of millions. I'm going to be rich. But in reality, that, not, that was not what happened. The American dream was was first couple of years American uh, nightmare because I, I, I didn't have enough money. You know, my, we're not affluent family that might not give me a couple thousand dollars to support myself when I come to the country. And then, okay, I'm a dentist. I have a diploma. But what I found out, I have to go back to school to be able to become a dentist, to be able to work work here, and back that was back in 1993, and uh, going back to school, private school, you're gonna have to have at least hundred fifty thousand dollars, two hundred thousand dollars to be able to get cert, cert, you know, get your dental di American diploma, and uh, I didn't have that money, so I had to feed myself. I really had to work a lot of mediocre jobs for the first couple of years in a convenience store, in a bakery, in a rock place where I used to I used to wash rugs and deliver them to rich people houses. Uh, so that was a great experience, but it was a little bit of agony because my ego was telling me, what are you doing? You're just you're a dentist. You have to be you're here to make millions. And now I in retro, I look back and see that was one of the best experiences I've ever had because I learned a lot how to deal with working in a in a like a not very uh, like low social economical areas and also go taken to like these are expensive oriented rocks to rich people's houses so i used to see two parts of the society 
So that ta taught me how to learn with the, you know, the, the, the poor and the rich. So I gained a lot of experience in learning about that. So then, you know, it's, it's a, uh, from there, it's just, I've been so blessed to be able to go back to school. I was able to finance, do like get some loans. And uh, now I'm at the position that I'm, I'm really blessed with what, what I'm doing. So this is a little bit of how my mm -hmm. old young person. Well, ta talking about a young person, I mean, okay, so you go through schooling, right? You, you're, you're a dentist, right? In yes. your mind, you're a dentist ready to make millions, like you said. Mm. You get to the U.S. and right. you find out that information that you can't, you have to go back to school. What kind of deflating moment was that? I mean, what was going through your mind when you were given that information that what you thought wasn't true? You know, it's... it's uh... I know that I had, there's a process that I have to go to, but I didn't. I didn't know that there's a throughout the process I had to go through a lot of hardship to be able to make a living. I thought, you know, I'm gonna come and this. Uh, I mean, I, I was clueless at the beginning about what the process is. I was always looking at, okay, the American dream. I'm gonna come go to the United States. I'm thinking about this dollar sign. I'm thinking about what's gonna happen. But I did not know that I'm gonna have to struggle for the first couple of years. So it's a little bit of shock, and you get you develop some anger. You develop some like resentment on on what am i doing here what about I'm, I'm a big shot dentist i have my diploma and i gotta I have to make a lot of money what am i doing in this in the hood working doing these working in a convenience store doing, fighting with people when they come steal beer why, why would i do that but uh again this is what what the shock that will happen is like i have never been put in situations that i have to struggle that way i mean going back to my background is financially we were okay but i didn't have to really make us go to have to make us these mediocre jobs and able to make a living if that makes sense yeah no i mean it definitely does mean so you're talking about i mean and, and i mean i think anyone would have that anger i mean so what was allowing you to push through i mean that anger was it just simply the idea of you knew where your future was and you just had to do one day at a time or is it something else you know uh I think all of us were born with some gifts. We're born with some some certain characteristic in our personality. And some people have a drive. Some people are just keep gonna you gonna keep going regardless of what's gonna happen. I think I had the drive. I had the energy that I'm not gonna give up. I'm gonna keep keep going. And even like when uh, when I uh, was able to become successful and become a dentist and establish my practices. I would I had this resentment, this anger carried along with me. But I can I'll share with you what made difference in my in my life uh, many, many years ago is that, you know, pro developing faith. I developed my faith. I worked on my Christian faith and I, I, I it helped me a lot in the way I run my business and it gave me a lot of peace and uh, stability in the way I do things. So I was many years ago, I was able to like kind of a tame my anger, tame all this resentment that I have. And uh, that helped me a lot in being successful in my business. When you talk about tame the anger, what I mean, what did you do? What, I mean, were there activities? Was it mindset stuff? I mean, what did you do to tame that anger? So it's about developing a, a philosophy. It might, I feel that you as a person, I mean, we, we are very successful in developing philosophies for our our business. For example, our mission statement is to continuously strive to provide excellent personal experience and high quality of care to our patients uh, to, and comfort to our patients. Uh, this is, we frame it, we put it in the office. Okay, what is my personal philosophy? My personal philosophy, uh, everybody has to have personal philosophy, philosophy, develop it, frame it, and have it in their office or in front of them that it can remind them about what to do in life, uh, how to do everything in life. In my my personal uh, mission statement is uh, I glorify God in everything I do and value others over myself. So everything, this is from the Bible, of course, that everything I do basically is circles around this. So what if I'm going to open like hire a dentist, I'm going to say, OK, what is what is how am I going to how gonna, I'm going to glorify God in doing this? What what God wants me to do and able to uh, glorify him. So I have to be fair to this dentist. I have to be. Uh, really generous with them. I have to guide and coach them, make sure that I'm that they're my disciples. I have to really know how to grow them, not to be selfish in what I what I what I give them. Uh, so ba basically, to make sure that I get my my philosophy, my the way thing is I'm going to do from my from my faith, from my 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 uh, the philosophy that I, I developed, my the definition of my philosophy. Does that make sense? Uh, any... Yeah, yeah. I mean, so it 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 sounds like faith. It sounds like I mean, religion, I mean, those are kind of like driving factors to 
yeah kind and, of help, help you run your day yeah i mean i and, and i don't want to be you know if, with all due respect to people who might have any different philosophy but my point is you have to have a philosophy sometimes it's a code that what you run by this is what yeah. well, this is what you have to have okay this is where i'm i run by this is what worked for me my faith is this is what what i i mm. walk by every day and this is how i run my business run my relationship by every day so my, my point is and i'm not going trying to go to the religion or the faith aspect i'm just sharing with you what i how i what my philosophy is my point is everyone has to have a certain philosophy that they go by uh, before going back to before when I you, I was talking about I had anger and resentment and when I came to the country is I just did not have any philosophy that I go by all my all I was I depending on was my uh, energy my uh, drive my work ethics like I, 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 I gotta move on I'm not gonna keep I'm gonna keep swimming I cannot I cannot drown so this is what that what I was depending on I have faith that I with this quality that I had, I could have been successful, definitely. But by having a philosophy that I run, run by, it made my success 10 and 20 times uh, fold, uh, if that makes sense. No, 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 it makes sense. I mean, it, it, you can run in circles and not get anywhere. But if you at least know where you're going, you're going right. to get there, even if you're walking. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, so, okay, you you finally get out of school in the U.S., and mm -hmm. now it's time, all this build up to build your business, to start your business. What does that look like when you actually start the business? You know, I started actually, I did not have my own business initially. For six years, I worked with dental uh, chains, big dental chains, because I did not have any, I didn't come from a business background and I, uh, I, did, not, I did not know how to uh, run a business. And for six years, I worked with a dental chain, dental, like I was an associate, I was a dentist working for some big company. After six years, I owned my first business. I was brave enough to take that step and, and buy my first business. And uh, yeah, I was so unsuccessful that I, I lost half of my business because I did not know how to run the business, uh, you know. But it's a, the, the, you know, one of the greatest lessons that I've learned. So then I start gaining some experiences. And it's all this like, like look, error and learn and make mistakes and make correct those, those mistakes and go from there. Um, so it was you know nerve-wracking at the beginning because you feel like you're alone and uh, you don't feel any you have any guidance and it's just you just learn by as you go and then what i have been blessed is um, we've grown our practice uh, uh, enormously and i bought three different practices and i merged them and i was to work i was able to work less hours but producing more and then now we are in the position that um, i have another dentist uh, uh, working for me and we're growing last year 2021 well, was our best year ever this year 2022 is also projected to be our best year ever ever so um uh this is basically what when i first started it's like i was it was i i failed i failed big time but uh i just kept kept, kept going what were some of those those failures in your mind that you're able to learn from failures is definitely in terms of business failures is uh i feel that definitely like being emotional as a leader, as a business owner, emotion, this is talking about the psychological level, emotions cannot play in a business. You have to, you cannot be led by the emotion. You have to lead by fact, then apply emotions to, to support your, your facts. So I was very emotional. Emotion doesn't mean like crying and, and why weeping. No, it's mean like you going back to the anger and, and frustration you get frustrated so you have a difficulties you have a challenge okay what the heck is this i'm gonna give up i'm not gonna, no i'm so that relates to the team that you're trying to lead and people are not going to believe in you if you are emotional they need a solid leader to follow so you have to have that image so i was i was very emotional at the beginning of my uh, business owner business ownership uh, this is on the psychological level number number two is not knowing how to run a business and i don't have don't, i don't have a uh, SOP or I don't have a like a process to run the business uh, but I started developing over these years so these are the two major challenges I I if I want to choose one I would say the psychological challenge is like emotions a leader can it should have le less emotions as possible it could not be led by emotions they have to be led by by facts okay so what what happens let's say some one of your employees does something that's that really messes up like they do something yeah. pretty bad yeah. What's your process? Is it taking the day, the, the rest of the day off? Is it taking an hour, off, half an hour, and then kind of soaking in? I mean, what do you do 
to like bring yourself down to level headed to assess kind of what happened? Well, the old, all those days, I, I, I used to be so proud of how many people I fired. I mean, I just like, would fire. <laughs> I'm not kidding you. So like somebody come here, you're fired. Get a, it's, it's like, I wouldn't lose sleep over it. But now I changed my, uh, for many, many years ago, it's about, you get a, you get a person, you look, they, do they fit my core values? The one that I have in my office, can I shape them a little bit to, to work, work with them? So I try to work on people. I, I give chances. Uh, my, my job is to coach people, not more than uh, uh, kind of a fire them because you feel, and I have a lot of my team members that really feel like they, I changed their lives and they appreciate what I'm doing for them because for a simple reason, I was not emotional. I looked at the fact I, I say, I saw the good in them. I said, okay, I'm going to get this good. I'm going to cultivate it and then go from there. You win big time when you believe in people and when you try to bring the best out of them and they believe on you as a leader. So this is my this is how I change my uh, philosophy on how I deal with team nowadays. So would you be able to give us an idea of when you first started on average, how many people you fired compared to now? <laughs> Probably no less than no less than 20 people. No okay. less than 20 people. Uh, I would I would I was like, oh, my God, it's uh, I developed the repetition in the area that don't work for this guy. It took me a little time to, <laughs> to, to get rid of that, that idea. Yeah. So it's, uh, it's, this is brutal. I mean, I wouldn't, uh, I, I wouldn't fire anybody nowadays. I'll give him a chance one, two, three, ten 10 times, unless it's something serious, of course, then you gotta, gotta get rid of him. Do you think that if with your business right now, if a younger you was looking for a job, you would hire them? Uh, I would hire them, but I got to coach them a lot. I got to yeah. coach them a lot. You got to get them out of their garbage mentality. They have to grow up a little bit. Uh, yeah. But I would, I would hire them. I would give a chance to anybody, uh, you know, 99% of people, I would hire them. I used to think like, you know what, I'm going to look for that 10% and then I, uh, you know, uh, and that 90%, I don't want, I don't want it, but I can, I think you can work with the 90%. Mm -hmm. And uh, as long as you're patient with them, you, you set a good, you set a good example for them and you coach them and you're patient with them, you'll be able to be successful. So we've been, we've been blessed. I can tell you, I think I shared this with you earlier is we are now I am in the process of establishing, actually we established a franchise, dental franchise uh, uh, company that we're going to be uh, uh, helping a lot of dentists establish their, grow their businesses, improve their businesses while they have ownership of their, of their businesses. So this is a big thing that uh, we just started at the beginning of the year with a lot of uh, good people that I'm working with, uh, part of a great, uh, it's called CBMC, Christian Businessman Connection, a great people that we're working with. And the, the reason we wanted to do this is I presented my, uh, my office as a spotlight in one of the meetings and it attracted attention for some smart people there. And they said, you, wanna, you know what, do you want to establish something like a, a franchise, like something like we can open more offices? I said, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm game. So what uh, what what's good about this is you hear a lot about a lot of private equity nowadays, a lot of uh, uh, DSOs that try try and buy in dental businesses, and they give the dentist four, four or five multiples on their EBITDA, and the dentist worked for them for a little bit, but they is they're not the owners, so they become they lose their authority, they just become an employee. And I didn't. I don't like this. I, I promised myself after I started my businesses, I will never work with, for anybody. I will always work for myself. And I felt sorry for some dentists who just give up their their uh, autonomy and they just for just few thousand dollars. So what we wanted to do is to let the dental dentist be the owner and help him take what I did over these twenty years growing my business to be the way it is uh, to help him grow the business the same way while while they are the dentist they own the business and all we charge is that royalty which is a very new concept not a lot of people are under, understand it we present when we present it to people they say what do you mean are you buying them no we're not buying them we're just like a franchise uh, but we, we are a franchise and what we're trying to do is let them have their own business let them grow as dentists and as leaders and uh, they'll make they make more money and our franchise will make more more money so you you give them you provide the structure if we brought the structure, the SOP, the the guidance, the the, the training, all that stuff. So, talking about that growth and, and this new platform that you've built, the franchise model, where do you see yourself and your business going in the next five years? 
I see myself in the five, next five years, honestly, having maybe on the, now we have talking about a couple of things you were talking about my, my, my business and my, uh, the franchise. So I consider my business now is part of the franchise. So, uh, my, the way it is now, it's the way I might have my business now. It's probably, I'm looking five years from my, it's maybe have another two dentists and, uh, double, double my, my, uh, income, uh, my, the income of the practice. On the franchise level is we five years from now we're, we are aiming to get maybe about you know ho hopefully uh, 50 franchise under our belt and uh, and the long term is we're gonna go invade the whole country and invade the world with with, with what we're what we're gonna be doing so it's a, a lot of smart people that in, are involved in this group so we're, we're I'm very excited about that it's it's a you know our aim is we focus on trying to influence other before our, our 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 gain so this is what what we what we try to do is uh, uh you know get those dent dentists to be they see the dentists they've never been good business men they're always focused on the tooth you know they they have a narrow sight so they always focus on the tooth and most of them that, that's why the average of of the uh dent dentist is about 170,000 a year that they make so people might think oh you're making a lot of money no they're not making a lot of money the average 170,000 dollar a year income that's not a lot for for a business owner. So what we try to do is to make them uh, really excel and have their own business and have the equity in it, their 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 business. And uh, so this is what the plan for the franchise to to do. I know you're based out of Cleveland, and I mean, as you're growing the franchise franchises outside of Cleveland, across the U.S. and then outside of the U.S., do you foresee any? changes or in different communities that you might have to do or do you think it's pretty consistent throughout uh communities and countries and so on and so forth uh it's definitely going to depend on the country the culture uh i think when you establish a certain model certain certain culture certain reputations people will follow uh i mean for example like chick-fil-a they, they you know that when you go to Chick-fil-A, Chick anywhere in the country, they're going to tell you my pleasure. When you say thank you, they're going to get, say my pleasure. So they, you know that this is the culture that they built. You know, it's a, it's a Christian-based organization. Uh, you know that, you know, all, all of them are going to be the same way. They're going, to, they're going to, they have a certain model that they follow. So when you develop this reputation, people will accept you regardless of where the culture is. You're going to have struggle at the beginning in the culture or the, the, the city, the state. Uh, but uh, at the end, when you develop the model, the reputation uh, with the franchise, there's a saying they say is the first uh, success on a franchise is an accident. The, sec the second one is a uh, something like it's a it's a luck, or the third one is the proof that you is the, the confirmation that you made it. So, but it, it takes a lot of time. You know, it's a it's a it's gonna work by God's grace, and it's a, it just takes a lot of time. Well, well, thank you, Michael, for, for being on the, the Roach Growth Podcast. Uh, if someone's listening, a dentist, or they're looking to find franchises that are going to pop up in their communities, what's the best way of them getting more information? So, well, uh, we, we're going to be, we're having a, uh, of course, it's it's uh, in the beginning stage of the franchise. Uh, within the next couple of months, we're going to have all this uh, information available, but they can uh, reach me at my cell phone number 216-926-6284. I'll be more than happy to guide them the right way and, and help them in trying to take the right decision. Can you repeat that one more time, the cell phone number? 216-926-6284. Perfect. And then I'm going to just finish off with this very, very last question. If someone else from a, from another country is looking to, to move to the U S maybe from Syria or somewhere else, they're looking to and start a business here. Yes. What's something that they should be aware of, keep their eyes on, have a focus on? I mean, what's something that you would advise that person? I would advise them to uh, be open-minded and not to be stuck in, in their own way, you know, and uh, not to really try to take the manipulation way in the United States. That does not work. You got you to gotta do it the right way. You have to be honest, straightforward. And believe in the value of this country. You know, a lot of people might come here without with that understanding that our value that we have in this country. Uh, but uh, don't do it the right way. Don't do it the wrong way. That's what I would advise them. And the, the, the doors will open enormously for you. Well, again, thank you, Michael, for, for being here today. I mean, thank you for having me. I appreciate you, Vinny. Thank you very much.
yeah, for, for listeners out there, I mean, please subscribe, please share, go in the show notes, find Michael, get the cell phone number right there. And also, I mean, if, if you're looking to start a business, plans change, right? Michael went to school, came to the U.S., was, I mean, kicked, basically, kind of the idea of yes. his plans were changing, yet having the mindset, having the growth, know who you are, know what your value is, know, know what you stand for, and just keep pushing forward because things will work out if you keep pushing forward. Thank you guys. And please subscribe, please share, uh, and go find Michael. Bye everyone. Thank you.